AMD loses a GPU company, the Steam OS is getting ready to launch everywhere else, and there's a lot of weird stuff happening with AMD's new GPUs besides losing the company. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, March 18th, 2025. Just as a reminder, we have a few things going on as a sort of housekeeping note. We have that PC giveaway going on over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash UFT tech, 9800 X3D, RTX 5080 PC. We'll be drawing the winner of that at the end of the month. Additionally, we didn't have an episode of Hot News on Friday because some of the team and I went on a trip to Cape Town, so we just got to have fun and you guys got a Strix Halo review instead. But what you definitely won't get a review of from UFD Tech is RX 9000 cards from MSI. We're actually working on our 9070 and 9070 XT review right now, not with MSI because they're not going to be launching any of them. And you can see that there's a significant decrease from previous generations to what we have now. There was 39 editions of the 5000 and 6000 series. There were four of the previous generation, and now there are none, with MSI confirming to Tom's hardware that MSI is not manufacturing AMD GPUs this generation. Now, this doesn't mean that they won't do it in the future, but given the series of events that have led up to this, you can see exactly why people are suspecting that they are just completely done. And you have Tom's hardware releasing this helpful graph showing that for the 5700 XT, there were six models of that. For the 7900 XTX, there was one. There was one model of the 7900 XT. There were two models of the 7600, none above the 7600. 600 and below the 7900 XT. MSI just kind of skipped the generation, but they released plenty of the previous versions. And even with those RX 7000 cards, they were just rebadged versions of the RX 6000. They didn't change their coolers at all, which has led to the speculation that potentially with the loss of EVGA after the RTX 30 series cards, MSI is kind of taking up that mantle, not in terms of reputation, but in terms of stock levels where they're becoming the preferred NVIDIA partner. And in order to do that, they have to give up the rights for AMD, which kind of looks like is happening currently. And even with the RX 7000, series, even though they launched only a few of them, they were massively delayed. We only found out weeks later after the 7900 XTX launch that MSI was going to be participating in it. So things are changing quite rapidly. AMD not being without because they do have companies like Acer coming in and releasing new versions of that. So there are different partner models that you can get. But we're going to talk a little bit more about AMD's two-tiered preferential system of their partners in a little bit, which could potentially lead to certain situations like EV leaving NVIDIA. Maybe that's why MSI is leaving AMD because of certain ways that they're being treated that they don't like. And I will tell you that one of the things I like is being treated nicely by Falcon Northwest, today's video sponsor, because they do that. They treat us nicely because they give us PCs to give away, like this Assassin's Creed Shadows PC that is going to be drawn towards the end of the month. They custom printed it, as you can see. It has tremendously fast power inside with an Intel Core i7 processor and RTX 4080 Super, all within the Falcon Northwest Talon chassis. That's going out to one of you. We'll announce the winner here on Hot News, but in case you're looking to get a new PC for your for a loved one, potentially for work, Falcon Northwest should be the place you go to check out because they have all of the latest tech. You want a 9950X3D that launched last week? You put that in town. You want a 5090? You put that in town. 9070XT? They have that as well. With the Talon being their mid-tower chassis, you can get it with the gaming hardware. You can get it with workstation hardware such as Threadripper, but you could also scale down to their Fragbox or their Tiki, which can still have tremendously powerful hardware, but in a more compact form factor. And you don't get compact versions of their customer service. No, that's expansive, coming up to three years of total support and one year of overnight shipping for them to help you out. And they like to help out the community, not just in a PC giveaway with the Assassin's Creed Shadow custom print that they do, which by the way, you can get on your own PC. They will do printing for you so that the components on the outside match the inside. But then they're also here testing out things like the 16 pin power connectors for the RTX 5090. They did testing with the Intel 13th and 14th gen chips to just kind of come to an understanding to help fully put out data so that the rest of the community can actually figure out what's going on because that's who Falcon Northwest is. They want you to not just get the benefits of them if you buy their system, but even if you're not going to buy them, they want you to benefit from their knowledge and their experience and their plethora of options that they have when it comes to testing. So you can check out Falcon Northwest at the link in the video description in case you want to pick up one of their PCs. Big thanks to them for sponsoring and big thanks to them for giving me a PC with Reese's face on it at home. I'm going to return to that after we leave South Africa, but 
now I get to enjoy Reese's face here live and in person. Got to see him all weekend. It was lovely. And now if you have Windows 11, if you've updated, you might not have to see Copilot anymore because according to a bug, it's gone. Windows Copilot being removed from Windows 11, mistakenly, unintentionally being uninstalled and unpinned, which Microsoft says that they're working on a resolution to address this issue. They're going to bring it back. But in case you haven't already uninstalled Copilot, this probably did it for that one coworker who's not really paying attention to all that. Now they don't have it anymore. I don't know if that's a good thing, but some people regard it as such. And in case you're looking on moving away from Windows, Valve marching forward on getting that ready for us with them releasing a new SteamOS update that isn't quite ready to make the wide release, but is getting closer to that with them updating various things for the DeX desktop mode, making it so that it has new floating panels as well as a reorganized settings menu, kind of getting it ready for prime time. Additionally, that the beginnings of support for non-Steam Deck handhelds was baked into the change notes for this version of SteamOS. So it's happening, it's coming soon. We have the Legion Go S, which is supposed to be supporting it just right out of the box, but then potentially bringing it things like that RG Flow Z13 handheld. Oh man, if I could put that on there, that would be fantastic. But speaking of Asus for a second, just wanna give a quick note to the fact that they have redesigned their Q Slim release connector, which allows you to easily remove a graphics card from the motherboard, but was found to be potentially scratching the PCBs of the connections. Now, uh, without really saying anything, you can see that the Q release slim on the right had a metal connector. Now the one on the left is slightly different and allegedly should potentially uh, fix all of that scratching issues. And Reese should potentially fix your uh, spending issues by saving you some money with UFD deals. Yo, welcome back to UFD deals, bringing the hottest take deals out on the internet. Hope you guys had a good weekend and hey, let's start the deals off today with something nice, the legendary Logitech G305. This wireless gaming mouse is currently going for only $26.35, making it $23.64 off. But then next up, we have the Rode will dual monitor VESA arm mount going for only $34.99 with included promo code making it $15 off. And then lastly today we have this very gorgeous looking KTC 27 inch 1440p 300 hertz fast IPS gaming monitor which you can currently pick up for only $249.99 making it $50 off. And hey with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well Reese if you happen to have an RTX 50 series GPU you got a great deal because there's now an unofficial mod for MSI Afterburner that will allow you to overclock those GPUs even more, getting up to 36 gigabit per second memory on these graphics cards. It allows you to extend the memory overclocking range to plus 3000 megahertz, thereby potentially getting you higher levels of performance. You got things like the RTX 5080, which goes up to 32 gigabits per second, but then it's down clock to 30. You could potentially get it even higher with that. So this might be a nice little helpful addition from unwinder for the people who want to overclock it even further. Let me know if you want our team, uh, our benchmarking team in the States to test out our 5080s and see if we could potentially get a little bit more performance out of this. In case you want a video on that, let me know down below in the comments. And I know what I've wanted is a reference edition from AMD for the RX 9000 series cards. They said it was only for promotional value. The, the GPU that you were seeing all over, that was just a rendered image. Turns out that's not true. There's at least one out in the wild that somebody is selling with a one year warranty. This 9070 XT being listed in China. It's just the reference edition, likely not being sold. They probably had to make it for some reason. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to get it here in the States. And I'm not gonna be able to get GPUs for MSRP anytime soon because there's so much information coming out about the weirdness that's happening with the 9070, 9070 XT and the pricing there. Hardware Unbox just did a great video where they talked to a bunch of retailers of what's going on with rebates. Why are things so expensive? And that just continues being seen across every different region, not just in Australia, not just in South Africa, but in the US and elsewise with base models, the ones that are supposed to cost that 599 price point, $130 plus. A lot of these starting typically at 799, a $200 price increase which makes them very expensive, 22% markup, being way more than the MSRP that AMD promised. Now, there's some talk about from AMD that they're trying to encourage retailers to push these prices down to get them closer to what they're supposed to be, but allegedly that's supposed to include rebates, not necessarily something that's just gonna hold all of the time. However, one of the things we're finding, and just to give you a little spoiler of our 9070 XT reviews that are coming out, even at 800 bucks, XT's 
probably one of the better value uh, brand new GPUs that's out there. It's still beating the 5070 Ti in, in a lot of different regards. It's a frustrating situation to be in. GPUs are very, very expensive right now, but also one of the reasons this may be happening where you're not seeing reviews of certain models is because AMD has a biased distribution amongst their RX 9000 series partners with giving certain versions of these companies higher allocations, making it so that you're not seeing reviews of their second tier partner. So Asus, XFX, Power Color, Sapphire, and Vast Armor are allegedly the first tier core partners. And then Acer, Yestin, Gigabyte, and ASRock being the second tier, making it difficult for you to find those GPUs for review. We did happen to get an ASRock and we did happen to get a Gigabyte that's going to be in our review of our XT testing. So in case you haven't seen those before, those are the ones that we're going to be uh, slapping into our coverage. And AMD is slapping into market share, okay? that We're talking about the negatives that are happening with the RX 9000 for the last little bit. Let's go ahead and talk about the positives, which is that according to AMD Japan, which isn't indicative of worldwide, but could potentially start indicating some trends, AMD has 45% market share with their graphics cards, with their team even joking that AMD isn't used to selling so many graphics cards, especially with this generation doing so well, and that if it weren't for supply chain issues, they could potentially get even higher and that they're gunning to hit 70% of total market share in the entire region. When you compare the 9070 XT versus the 5070 Ti, the performance is great on the 9070 XT. Comparatively, they're saying 23% better price to performance. They're assuming MSRP, so there's a little bit of trickiness there, but AMD is doing well. It seems like they're doing well. We talked about this in Friday's episode of Hot News that according to the distribution of new GPU sales, they're crushing it compared to Nvidia. Some of this has to be stock related. If Nvidia can work out their supply chains, they can work out making it so that they have higher available ability. Potentially this will shift, but AMD is looking good this generation. And you guys look good at the comments, both on Friday's video of our Strix Halo review, as well as our Thursday episode of Hot News. So let's take a look at the Strix Halo review first with Bud the Cyborg saying, I was so confused at first, but now I see those are 8, 1080p high and 1600 p medium, which does beautifully show these chips are perfectly capable of high resolution output. Yeah, the, the Strix Halo chip, we tried to match it so that you would be playing at the settings that you would want on the tablet. So it's 16 p we went medium but then we did 1080p high to standardize so that was for future testing or um you know being able to compare it to other things that are out on the internet finally just a day or two after we released our strix halo review um mini pcs that are capable of the 120 watts uh, those reviews started dropping from the likes of ETA Prime and otherwise, and this chip is really good. It can go even faster than what we saw. I'm, I'm so excited. And then Scotty does know, saying, can't wait till they release something like this with SteamOS. Hopefully I'll be able to install it myself. That's what I'm looking forward to. And then Todd Stewart saying, can we talk about what a monster of a mobile workstation this APU is going to make possible? CAD, CAM, video editing, finite analysis, rendering, and set. It's, oh man, the 8060 Si GPU is so good. Having that extra RAM that you're gonna be able to get on something like the framework desktop with 128 gigs. I am salivating at these things. And then on Thursday's episode of Hot News, we got Hayes and Play saying 1470 for an RTX 5080 in US would actually be a decent price since you can't even find them in stock here for that price. Scalpers are selling them for 2K plus, not saying it's a good buy at 1470, but it's a lot worse over here. I mean, I get that. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I'm looking forward to when it comes to, to being in South Africa with uh, PC hardware is that I can pretty much always get what I want from Wootware. They typically always have stock when the US even might not. So like they have the 9800X3D in stock right now. 5090s still have been kind of hard to find on their website. Oh no, they have uh, MSI stock of the 5090. That's really expensive at 73,000. But the, the pallet one coming in at 65,000, especially because I worked with them previously, I'd be able to contact them and say, hey, move one aside for me, please. I would really like it. And I'd be able to get it but with the 5080 you know they they have that in stock one of the one of the advantages of living in South Africa wasn't pricing, it was availability. And so I'd be paying more, but I could always kind of guarantee that we'd have access to the things that I'd want to review, which is not something I can guarantee in the States right now. 5070 Ti, we didn't get one for a review, didn't have one. Actually one showed up the day after we left. So that's 
almost a month after they launched, we finally got our hands on one. So it's it's a tricky situation, but you know, I, there's there's advantages to being here. And then uh, just to kind of talk about the pedantry that happens in the comments sometimes. I got I am Spencer X saying, you made a small mistake at 1604. You converted 27,000 ZAR to USD, but the card only costs 26,999. Really? Because I rounded up an entire rand. 27,000 rand is $1,491.45. 26,999 is $1,491.39. It's a difference of six US cents. I round it up so that I would only have to move my fingers less. Come on, man. Really? And who upvoted this? What, what are you doing? Guys, come on. Aish, bro. All right, well, that's gonna be uh, the end of this episode of Hot News. Don't forget that we do have that Twitch giveaway going on, twitch.tv forward slash UFD Tech, the Assassin's Creed giveaway going on, thanks to Falcon Northwest. You'll find links in the description for all of that. We should have Hot News every day this week, theoretically. There shouldn't be much keeping us. We, we're not doing a ton of traveling uh, within the country uh, this week. So uh, we'll see you back here for more of all of the tech stuff that we got going on later. Goodbye. Goodbye.